Hey y'all, welcome to a new week of what's for dinner. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing four really easy but super yummy dinners as well as one of my favorite desserts at the end. So first up, I'm making nachos. I'm browning up about two pounds of some ground chuck and while that's browning, I'm going to heat up this can of Rico's nacho cheese sauce as well as a can of refried beans. Now, for my seasoning for the meat, I'm going to be using a packet of this ranch taco seasoning. I've had this in my pantry for quite a while, and I definitely wanted to make sure that I use that up. I'm also going to use about a packet's worth of just regular taco seasoning. I did add in about three quarters of a cup of water, and I'm just going to mix that together really good, let it simmer for a bit. Now, of course, you could leave it just like this, have your basic taco seasoned ground beef, but sometimes I do like to add in some salsa for some extra flavor, and I like it to be a little bit more on the saucy side. I didn't add in too much because I don't want it to be too spicy for my family. Um, but this is just the great value cantina style, super good. Um, and anytime I use canned refried beans, I always like to add in like a big scoop of sour cream and a handful of some sharp cheddar cheese, mix it together. And I promise you it makes them a hundred times better. So now I can start assembling the nachos. So of course I'm starting with a base of tortilla chips. I have to say though, I did buy the great value round tortilla chips and they were not my favorite. I've liked many of the other ones, but these in particular were just like too thick to the point I almost thought they were stale, even though I knew they weren't. But anyways, I did layer on a good amount of the Rico's Nacho Cheese Sauce. It's our favorite. Plenty of that seasoned ground beef. And I found this new shredded cheese at Walmart. This is the mac and cheese blend. So I really wanted to give it a try. So I just sprinkled a little bit over the ground beef. It is super good, and I always like to have at least two cheeses with my nachos. So now I'm just layering on some shredded lettuce as well as some diced tomatoes, and I'm also going to drizzle this with a good amount of taco sauce because, of course, I love the flavor, but I like my nachos to be saucy. Um, I did make some homemade guacamole. So to make it look nicer, I'm using my large cookie scoop to kind of plop that on there. So I did a scoop of the guacamole, a big scoop of the refried beans, and then I used my smaller scoop to do some sour cream. For the last final touch, I did have some fresh chopped cilantro in my fridge. So I'm just kind of sprinkling that all over the plate. And I always have to have a couple lime wedges on the side to squeeze over my nachos. I think this is a beautiful plate. And regardless of these tortilla chips not being my favorite, it was still super delicious. And it's just a cheap meal to make. It's super quick and it's just a family favorite. It's something that all four of us equally love. And it seems like every time that I'm make this. We always sit down to watch a good movie to go along with it. So it's just like a fun food for us. And the kids always look forward to like assembling their own nachos. It's just one of those dinners that never get old to us. Up next, I'm making these garlic parmesan chicken sandwiches with bacon, and I'm also going to show how I made those roasted potatoes. So I am going to start with the potatoes since those take the longest to cook. I started those first. So this is about a half of a five pound bag of russet potatoes. I did wash them and scrub them very well because we do prefer to keep the peels on, but if you don't like that, simply peel them first. I do get those chopped in half, and then I cut them into quarters and then just into a little bite-sized pieces. Very easy. I got all of those transferred to a large mixing bowl. I'm going to drizzle those with a good amount of olive oil. This will help crisp them up, and it will also help all of the seasoning stick. Every time that I make these, I season them up differently, just depending on what I'm feeling that day. So I did go pretty heavy-handed on this day. I like some well-seasoned potatoes. I always start with some salt. Potatoes do need a lot of salt, and I do not like them undersalted. So I did sea salt, black pepper, lots of onion and garlic powder. I also threw in a little bit of paprika for some color. And I also like the look of dried parsley being in the potatoes. And I've really been liking dried oregano lately. So I decided to throw that on in there as well. So I'm going to get all of these tossed together really well, making sure that every potato is fully coated. And I'm going to transfer that on over to my cookie sheet. And the reason that it looks the way it does is because I cooked my bacon in the oven oven for those sandwiches right before I did the potatoes. I did drain off most of the grease and stored it in my fridge to save for recipes, but I did leave a little bit because I knew that it would really flavor those potatoes even better. 
So I'm gonna bake those at 400 degrees for about 35 minutes. So for the chicken, I have two good sized chicken breasts. And as you can see, I got those for a little less than $4. And to make them stretch even more and to make them perfect for sandwiches, I did slice those in half equally. I got those covered with some cling wrap and I am just pounding those out with my meat mallet to make them thinner. Um, again, I want them to be perfect for a sandwich. I don't want them too thick. And this will also help cook them more evenly. So I'm going to be using my cast iron for this. I did add in a little bit of olive oil. I have it on about a medium high heat and once my skillet was nice and hot I did drop my chicken in season side down and I want to make sure that nothing is overlapping and now I'm seasoning the other side the same way. I'm keeping it simple with some salt, pepper, and garlic powder because we are going to be adding a sauce to it. Um, but I just let those sear for about a minute on each side because we are going to be finishing this off in the oven and I don't want to dry them out um, they're on the thin side i'm gonna grab my garlic parmesan sauce from buffalo wild wings and drizzle a good amount over each piece and then i'm gonna take my silicone spatula and just spread that out evenly now i don't think i mentioned it yet but i did see this recipe on tiktok and i will definitely have the original video linked in my description box for y'all to go watch it definitely caught my eye i knew that i had to make it but after I got those seared, um, I popped that back in that 400 degree oven for about 10 minutes. So here I am pulling it out. The original video just puts shredded Parmesan cheese over the top. Save a lot did not have Parmesan cheese this night. So I just went for this Italian style blend, which worked perfectly. But as soon as that cheese was melted, these were ready to be served. So I served them on some buttered and toasted buns with two slices of bacon. I always drizzle my roasted potatoes with some ketchup. And I also serve this meal with this Caesar bacon salad kit from Walmart. I love the regular Caesar salad ones. I buy them all the time. I don't think I bought the bacon one before. Um, I probably wouldn't again. It came with like the smallest amount of bacon, like an embarrassingly small amount, but it was still good. The roasted potatoes are always a hit and y'all, we absolutely love these sandwiches. I can definitely see why they went viral. Um, very few ingredients and it's something that I could see myself making on repeat. This next dinner, I remember this being a like super chaotic day because this was the last meal that I made before a week long vacation to Florida. So this day was full of cleaning, packing, all the things. I wasn't too sure on what I wanted to make for dinner. I just knew that it needed to be like a no brainer meal. Very simple. Um, I needed to use up what I had in the kitchen. I definitely was not making a trip to the store. So I knew that I wanted to do pork chops. So these were the last of my Uncle Charlie's pork chops that were in my deep freezer. They are our absolute favorite. I definitely need to restock those. My kids really, really love them. They'll eat anything that I make with these. Um, and I love how quickly they thaw out because of the way that it's packaged. So I'm just simply cooking those in some butter and olive oil. I've seasoned those on both sides with salt, pepper, and garlic powder. And I just let those cook for a few minutes on each side. Um, as you can see, they are all nice and beautiful, golden brown. I'm getting those removed to a separate plate. And and I'm just gonna go ahead and set that to the side. And now I'm gonna make a really delicious gravy to cover these in. So with all of those drippings left in the pan, I've added a couple tablespoons of butter. I'm also gonna add a couple tablespoons of just some all-purpose flour once the butter was melted. And then I'm taking my silicone whisk because I don't wanna damage my pan with a metal one. Um, and I'm just gonna stir that really well, making sure to break up all the clumps. And I'm gonna let that cook for a couple of minutes to cook out that raw flour. The recipe did call for a cup of chicken broth. Um, I'm gonna be using water and chicken bouillon powder instead. So I started by adding the water first, got it mixed in with the roux really well, and then I added in the teaspoon of the chicken bouillon powder. And as you can see, this gravy is already starting to come together thanks to that flour. And I do have this on about a medium high heat, so you can see that it's nice and bubbly. The last ingredient, I'm gonna be adding some of this Hidden Valley Ranch seed seasoning mix. We love this in so many recipes and it worked so well here. It really made this gravy like extra delicious. 
So now that the gravy is done, I'm going to add back in those pork chops as well as all of the juices that kind of accumulated on that plate. I did go in with my spoon and I'm just getting all of the pork chops completely covered in that gravy. And I just let those simply simmer for a few minutes just to kind of heat back up those pork chops. And that was it. So here is my plate. Um, I have one of those pork chops and I did make some homemade mashed potatoes because I had to use up the other half of my bag of potatoes before we left. I put plenty of that gravy over the top. I also had a really beautiful tomato left. Obviously that had to go, so I just sliced it up, threw it on the plate with some salt and pepper. That's always fun in the summertime. And a friend gave us some pickled cauliflower, and oh my goodness, I'm obsessed. I have never had that before. I love it. I need to learn how to make it myself. But y'all, this pork chop and gravy recipe perfect. Um, we all cleaned our plates. The pork chops were perfectly cooked, tender, and juicy, and that gravy was just out of this world. This next dinner was the first one that I made as soon as we got back from our week-long vacation. It's always nice to have that reset. I always really look forward to getting back in the kitchen. So I'm going to be trying out two new recipes. Starting off with a side dish, I'm trying out this sour cream rice bake. So to a saucepan, I've added a cup of jasmine rice and two cups of chicken broth, brought it up to a bowl, covered it with a lid, and I turned it down to low to simmer for about 20 minutes. So as you can see, all of that chicken broth has been been absorbed by that point. I'm just going in and fluffing everything up and it's cooked perfectly. It's nice and fluffy. And now I'm going to start adding in all the good stuff. So you need about a cup of sour cream, which is what I believe that I had exactly left in that container. I'm also going to add in this whole four ounce can of diced green chilies, juice and all. I am using a mild version. You'll also need a can of corn drained, or you could use some fresh corn if you want it to. And then I'm going to grab my Monterey Jack cheese. Um, I'm adding in about a half a cup right now. I'm also going to do about a small handful of some fresh chopped cilantro. And then I'm just adding salt to taste. You definitely need it in this dish. And I'm just folding everything together, getting it all mixed really well. And then I'm going to transfer that on over to a grease casserole dish. This is a smaller casserole dish. And I'm just taking the back of my spatula and spreading that out to be nice and smooth on top. And then lastly, I'm just going to hit it with another half a cup of that cheese. And I'm going to bake it at 350 for 30 minutes. So the second new recipe that I'm going to be trying out is some Hawaiian meatball skewers. So... Again, I've got about two pounds of ground chuck. I'm going to get that added to my mixing bowl. I'm going to grab some plain panko breadcrumbs, and I'm going to add in one cup. I'm also going to add in two eggs. I always like to crack those in a measuring cup first just to avoid any accidental shells. I'm also going to add in a tablespoon of soy sauce. And now for the seasonings, we're going to do a teaspoon of garlic powder, teaspoon of onion powder. I'm going to do a half a teaspoon of some ground ginger. Don't believe I've ever done that in meatballs, but... I'm here for it. And I'm also going to do about a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. The recipe did not call for salt, but it just felt wrong not to add it. And I'm glad that I did. I thought that it definitely needed it, especially since I just use like low sodium soy sauce. But now it's time to mix it. The best way to do that is with your hands. So I just continue this until it just comes together. You definitely don't want to overwork it. Now, I don't normally use like a cookie scoop to portion out meatballs, but I guess it was that week reset away from the kitchen. But I just decided to do that to make them all like uniform in size. It's completely fine to kind of just eyeball that and not use a cookie scoop. But I'm just going to continue doing that until all of this meat is gone. And then I'm going to go back in with my hands to each one just to kind of pack it a little tighter so they won't just like completely fall apart on the skewers. And um, yeah, just to make them look nicer. So I'm just going to continue doing that. Um, and here they are once they are all to the way that I like them. I did also earlier in the day prep the vegetables and the pineapple. So got a fresh pineapple cut up. I also cut up a red and green bell pepper. I cut those into kind of large pieces and now I can start assembling the skewers. So these are just your normal wooden bamboo skewers. I did soak those in water like it tells you to do. I think that is to prevent them from burning. Um, I am going to be making these in the oven. So I don't know if that was completely necessary, but I did it just in case. When I was meal planning these, I did have every intention of doing these on my gas grill. Um, I was kind of excited about that, but we've been getting the outside of our house like remodeled for about a month now. So 
there was people on the porch when I wanted to grill them, and I didn't want to bother them. It's been very loud outside, and that's one of the many reasons why I have not been able to pop out the videos like I wanted to this summer. Um, as we speak, I have asked Josh to take the kids and our puppy out for a drive so that I can get these voiceovers done, but Anyways, I got all of these skewers assembled. Um, you can do it however you want, but I did four meatballs per skewer, except for the last one. I only had three. And two pieces of pineapple, four pieces of peppers. And um, those go in the oven at 400 for 15 minutes. Right before I popped in those meatball skewers, this sour cream rice bake was done. So here is what that first scoop looks like straight from the oven. I think that looks so good. It sounded really good to me. And I've really been on the hunt lately for some different like side dish options. So now that all that's done, I can make the sauce. So you need pineapple juice, soy sauce, brown sugar, rice vinegar, and some cornstarch. So to a small saucepan, I'm adding in a cup of the pineapple juice, a half a cup of the brown sugar, a quarter cup of the rice vinegar, as well as a quarter cup of the soy sauce, and you need two tablespoons of cornstarch. At the moment, I could only find my half a tablespoon measure, so that is why you see me dump it in four times. Anyways, I got that mixed together really good, making sure to really break up the cornstarch. I moved it on over to my stove at about a medium heat to get it nice and bubbly, and I let it simmer for a couple of minutes until it was thickened, and that is it. I believe maybe that's like a homemade teriyaki glaze. I'm really not too sure. I just know that it was very good and it complemented everything perfectly. Like this is what made this recipe so good. So as you can see, I'm just generous, generously brushing that over each skewer with my little silicone brush. And um, yeah, I thought these looked really pretty. I can only imagine what these would look like and taste like if you did do them on the grill. That way the vegetables and the pineapple could kind of get like that char on it. But either way, I was still really pleased with this. So here is my plate. I have one of the skewers. I don't know if you can tell, but these meatballs are plump. It's plenty. It was very filling. I also have some of the sauce on the side to dip everything in. I have plenty of the rice casserole. And I was craving some fresh cucumbers, so I threw some of those on there. So as for this casserole... It was a hit. I will definitely be remaking it. It was really good as leftovers as well. And the skewers were very good as well. Absolutely love the flavors. And it was just something different. So it was really nice. Now, lastly, as promised, I'm going to be sharing one of my favorite desserts, and that is peach cobbler. Summertime is peach season, so I figured this would be perfect to include in a video. Now, normally I do use canned peaches. That's how my family's always done it. I do really love it that way, but I wanted to try it out with fresh peaches, and I'm pretty sure this is my first time doing that. So, um, you want to get the peelings off. You don't absolutely have to, but we would prefer it that way. And I've always heard the easiest way to do that is to dunk them into some boiling water for about a minute and then take them out and put them into an ice water bath. That will stop the cooking. It will also make them cool to touch and start working with. And I would recommend that method. It worked really well. The peelings slid off with such ease. Um, it did take, you know, some peaches peeled easier than others, as you can see, some spots were like a little bit mushy, but it's kind of my own fault. My peaches were all definitely a little bit too ripe to do this. Um, ideally for this recipe, you want to use ripe peaches, of course, but you want them to be firm to the touch, and none of these were. This was literally the day after I went and bought them, and y'all, I have been having such a time lately with fresh produce, but... Anyways, like I said, you know, if you want to skip all this, you can definitely just use a large can of peaches, the juice and all, like the syrup kind. It'll be just as good. It's very good that way. Um, but anyways, I did lose a peach in the process because after I got it peeled, it was completely rotten. So I had to toss it, unfortunately. So I'm just working with seven peaches, but it ended up working out. I did want to show me slicing up a couple of the peaches just in case you've never done it before. I know it's not something that I've done all that often. I don't always have fresh peaches on hand, but I always start by kind of cutting them like I would an avocado around the pit, twist it, open it up. The first half, you know, slices very easily. The second half, you have to remove the pit. And I definitely did not end up with like the perfect peach slices every single time, but it truly does not matter. Like I said, it's going to be a cobbler, so it's all just going to kind of cook up anyways. It just, you know, doesn't matter. Also, um, you definitely want to be very careful slicing these because without the peel, they are very slippery. So I really had to take my time. 
So anyways, I'm going to get all those transferred to a mixing bowl and I'm going to add a little less than half a cup of brown sugar because I didn't feel like I had enough peaches for what the full recipe called for anyways. Um, and I'm just going to go in with my spatula and fold everything together gently. Um, this is going to help bring out the natural sweetness of the peaches and as it sits, it's going to create a nice little syrup. So I'm going to grab my large cast iron skillet and I'm going to add a stick of butter. I recommend salted butter for this and I'm going to let that preheat with the oven at 375 degrees. To another mixing bowl, I'm going to add a cup of flour, a cup of sugar, and a cup of milk. I'm also going to do a teaspoon of baking powder and a teaspoon of vanilla. Also, I did use all-purpose flour in case you are wondering. So that's it ingredient-wise for the batter. I'm just going to get that mixed together very well and it should resemble a pancake batter. By this point, my oven is preheated, like I said, to 375, and that stick of butter has melted. I also wanted to know, you don't have to use a cast iron skillet for this recipe. There has been plenty of times I just use a regular baking dish. It will still turn out wonderful, I promise. But I got all those peaches done to out. I'm getting those spread out more evenly, and now I'm just going to take the batter and drizzle it all over the top. This is one of those recipes where you do not want to stir anything don't stir it. Um, remember, the skillet's very hot, so use some oven mitts, but pop that in the oven for 45 minutes. Here is what it looks like when it is done. It is nice and golden brown. Everything has caramelized, and I just think that this is gorgeous. This is one of the most cozy and comforting desserts to me anyways. This is something that I've had my whole life and we all just love it. We always serve it with a scoop of vanilla ice cream on top. It complements it so perfectly, and it turned out amazing. It's been a while since I've made one of these, so we really, really enjoyed it, but that is all I got for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that there was at least one recipe in here that you would like to try yourself. If you made it this far in the video, I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope that all of you have an amazing week ahead of you, and I will see y'all real soon soon with my next video. Bye guys.